Ladies and gentlemen, we are live broadcasting worldwide. I am your host, Alex Jones, and Aaron Klein, Breitbart.com Jerusalem uh, editor, uh, is joining us here in just a moment to not just talk about Trump basically officially recognizing Israel uh, as, as a state. I mean, that's what this really is. This isn't just about the embassy. Uh, and then we're also going to get into... Uh, the Roy Moore situation, he is right there just a few days off from the election, that special election, the, the, this big bellwether, right there in Alabama, tracking all of this. As you know, we were the first to predict here, ladies and gentlemen, that they were burning Weinstein and burning Kevin Spacey and all these people to build a wave to make it look like it's legitimate for Trump to stand down when there's no evidence there is tons of evidence with the other men. Now Democratic Party operatives have been admitting that. I have clips on CNN, MSNBC we haven't even gotten to yet, but that ties into all of this. But before I go any further uh, here today, I wanted to just briefly remind you that we're launching something called Christmas Week. Instead of having Green Monday that they launched to be environmental, don't drive, don't fight the you know, the uh, mall crowds, which is a great idea, shop online. We'll shop online with patriots that are fighting to restore this republic uh, and empower our economy and who promote freedom. And we have supplements, books, films, T-shirts, uh, water filtration systems, so many incredible things available at InfoWarsStore.com. Free shipping has now been brought back store-wide, and we have 60-plus items at 50% off. These aren't these aren't non-bestsellers. These are Brain Force. These are the real red pill. These are the new product, Alpha Power. Out of the gates, some of these new products, 50% off. I want you to see how amazing they are. And many of these, like DNA Force, 33% off, and others, have a lot of clinical studies behind them as well on the amazing properties they have. You see how good our research is on politics in the world, how game-changing it is. I go out to the top experts to bring you the very best products like Brain Force, Alpha Power, Survival Shield, all the storable food at InfoWarsStore.com, fresh, brand new, produced in America, powered by my patriot, 50% off. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or 888-253-3139. And since the globalists hate anything traditionalist and want to get rid of everybody's cultures and just say the holidays, they don't want to hear Hanukkah, they don't want to hear Christmas, they don't want to hear any other th thing either. It's just get rid of any culture. We're calling it Christmas week. Huge sales are going to run throughout this week, so you can be sure and order any time up until the 19th and get delivered anywhere in the United States before Christmas. And that means uh, places like Hawaii, you name it. So again, joining us, ladies and gentlemen, right now is... The Breitbart.com Jerusalem editor, Aaron Klein, best-selling author, researcher. I'm not going to go over his whole lengthy bio. He's been with us before. Uh, where do you want to begin? The situation uh, in the Middle East, the latest terror attack today that Google's now censoring people. Don't uh, They're saying don't say it's Islamic. Or do you want to get into the Roy Moore situation first? <laughs> first of all, thanks for uh, having me. And yeah, sure, we can talk about whatever you want. Um, uh, when it comes to Jerusalem, though, I'll tell you, I don't see why um, the Palestinian Authority and the Arab world seems to be going uh, so crazy about this because it's not it's not a game-changing development. What Donald Trump did was recognize reality, which is that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And then what you had were the usual who's who, the witch's brew of jihadist organizations and then um, countries and Middle East leaders that use any excuse to incite against the United States and Israel, and they've been threatening basically holy war, days of rage. Well, we haven't seen that much come out of it. I mean, like, the first day there were thousands of Palestinians on the street. Second day, hundreds of Palestinians on the street. Um, today, I think the numbers are a lot smaller. Um, so it's not exactly the end of the world, as the Palestinian Authority and the Muslim countries predicted. And also, by the way, it doesn't change that much on the ground. Um, if the United States moves its embassy, and by the way, maybe in a year, maybe four years, depending on how long it takes to build an embassy, that doesn't preclude the Palestinians getting in the future, and I don't think they should, but getting um, some sort of entity or, or capital in Jerusalem as well. Um, and also, by the way, I don't get why, uh, how it is that Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian Authority president, can get away with uh, saying that this is the United States 
withdrawing from the so-called peace process because um, I'm sorry, but I, I know history and what I've seen time and again is actually the Palestinians being offered, I think, a state six times, seven times in 2000, 2001, 2008. Well, I was about to say, you know, I, I've been criticized for, for, for not being pro-Israel enough, and I've been criticized for being a, you know, supposedly agent by the left. Uh, but now they just say you're a Nazi. Now they say Trump's a Nazi, Netanyahu's a Nazi. Uh, of course, the images don't really work with, with it being a, a you know, Jewish country. And uh, this just goes on and on and on. And exactly, the more you appease the Palestinians, the more they attack, and Saudi Arabia won't take them, Jordan won't take them, Egypt won't take them, and then you've got all these people running around like Linda Sorcer, everybody else just says push Israel into the ocean, and then Trump just says we're already having our meetings in Jerusalem. You know, we passed a law decades ago saying we're going to do it, we're going to do it. It's reality. You're already blowing us up. You know, the terror group said, we're going to blow you up if you move your embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and they said, but we're going to blow you up if you don't. So I just say, you know, it's, it's reality. Here's the gauntlet. Kissing your butts hasn't worked. And, and you need to now come to the table and be realistic. Just like you said, I know the word is Trump behind the scenes. You probably have intel on this. Is actually working on a pretty good deal trying to work with Israel and work with the Palestinians if they would just be realistic. I'm being told there's some pretty big concessions behind the scenes that Netanyahu and others have been uh, talking about doing if the Palestinians are realistic and stop saying we're going to push Israel into the ocean. They have to stop doing it. They have to say Israel has a right to be there in those areas and then, then share power if people are uh, reasonable. Well, you know, we've tried the same exact formula for decades, which is the two-state solution, uh, which, by the way, I just don't like these terms. Like, two-state solution almost sounds like the final solution. Um, but, you know, the two-state solution would be a uh, state for Israel on the one hand, which is a democracy, and then a state for the Palestinians on the other hand, um, while they support terror and refuse to recognize the existence of Israel. Um, so we've tried it, though, um, for decades, and what has happened is that Every single time, this is it's an exact mathematical equation. 100% of the time that the Palestinians have been offered a state, including on everything they ever said they wanted, uh, Gaza Strip, West Bank, eastern sections of Jerusalem, 100% of the time they not only rejected the state with no counteroffers, um, but instead they launched violence, they launched intifadas. And so now, Abbas right now is in a unity deal with Hamas. In other words, the Palestinian government is a terrorist government outright. They're in a partnership with Hamas. Um, so that kind of outs the Palestinian Authority for what they are. That being said, first of all, because of Iran, because of the rise of the Iranian Shiite access throughout the Middle East, what you have now are the Sunnis, meaning especially Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, and Kuwait, and the UAE, and the who's who of the Sunni Arab world, um, they hate Iran so much, and they are so threatened by Iran and by Barack Obama's um, nuclear deal with the Iranians that they now understand that they need to create a coalition, an alliance, and then at the center of that coalition is Israel, the mightiest military in the Middle East. And so actually, there happens to be a pretty unique opportunity, I think, even historic, uh, because the tectonic plates have shifted so dramatically in the last few years, with Iran taking over in Syria and in other places, that actually the Saudis want I wouldn't say they want peace with Israel, but they understand Stay there, Aaron the Klein. This is this is riveting. We'll be right back and we'll talk Roy Moore. That's Bing Crosby. Every time I play this song, I'm gonna tell you, five years ago I first heard they wanted to ban it. They have banned it on most college campuses. Uh, they've banned a bunch of others. This is the total uh, mind control going on. And again, I just remember over the years, because I didn't want to get in the middle of the Israel-Palestinian thing. To me, that's overseas. It's kind of like a Ron Paul guy. I just say, stay out of this all. I don't hate the Muslims. Don't hate Israel. You know, just, just, just. And then I would just get bullied online and by leftist publications going, Jones hates Muslims. Jones is a racist. Jones is probably on the payroll of Israel. Never been to Israel. And, and, and it was actually, they're bullying trying to make me be anti-Israel that made me study it more and become pro-Israel. So uh, good luck with all of that bullying that's gone on. And now it's just fever, crazy town level, and and how dare Israel even exist, and oh my gosh, and 
on and on and on. The media, oh, the Israel's ever, if Israel ever shoots back and kills somebody, oh, they're murderers. But then when I watch the Islamic Spring and all this stuff, the Arab Spring, murdering over a million people, killing Christians, blowing up over a thousand churches in four countries, selling women into sex slavery, the media would have Anderson Cooper going, look, they're liberating Egypt, they're liberating Libya, they're liberating Syria. But thank God our military, the Russians, Trump, everybody else said, we're not going to be part of this anymore. And so as the uh, editor for Breitbart Jerusalem, Aaron Klein, best-selling author, talk show host, you name it, was just saying, if you just tuned in, now finally, because of Trump and the leadership and, and, and how out of control Iran's gotten, Saudi Arabia and others are going, okay, we're going to stop funding both sides. We want to fix this and have a peace deal. So, Aaron, you got caught up with the break. You said the planets have aligned, basically, or the tectonic plates have aligned, finally for some big deal. What's the word? Uh, is, is anything leaking out of the Knesset? Because uh, Trump you know, says he wants this big deal in Israel, and my sources say Trump is working, Kushner and others, on some really big deal that, that if the Palestinians will just accept it, they're going to really get a place at the table, industry, jobs, infrastructure, but they can't have terrorists as their leaders. You know, to me, what I'm hearing is that the big deal, uh, quote-unquote, is more Israel and the Arab world. Um, because, as I said before the break, because the Arab world now is so aligned against Iran, they're actually willing to, some, to come to an accommodation. In fact, they want it. They also want it for their economy, um, because Israel is the high-tech leader of the world, in fact. A lot of the major high-tech firms are based not just in Silicon Valley. They have a satellite office in Israel. So, But because of Iran, basically, the deal that I'm hearing is something larger. Israel, the Saudis, the UAE. Um, and so you have the larger Arab countries that are now trying to pressure the Palestinian Authority, which has rejected every deal until now and is in a unity deal with Hamas, um, to accept something. And, you know, what you were just saying before about the left in America attacking you and the issue of Israel, it's actually connected in, in many ways to what's going on here in Alabama because it's the same mentality and certainly what's going on with all the sex assault accusations around the country. And that is um, we're supposed to believe suddenly after decades of the media, of the Democrat Party, and sometimes the establishment Republicans, um, not just defending a rapist president, um, but covering up for him and then actively smearing the very credible accusers of Bill Clinton, um, like Juanita Broderick, who I have interviewed several times. Um, I interviewed, by the way, the nurse who found her immediately after she says Bill Clinton. Absolutely happened. Her. He settled a bunch of them. You got Fusion GPS caught with the uh, Epstein made-up stuff, with Bill Clinton, uh, so, so they could try to blame Trump, but but to cover up for him exactly. They clearly are getting rid of Deadwood, people they knew they couldn't cover up for anymore. Uh, uh, and to, to build this whole momentum as if, well, now Trump's got to step down when there's no evidence of it. It's completely transparent. So what do you think is about to happen with Moore in this special election, Aaron Klein? Um, yeah, so for, you know, there's total Democrat hypocrisy, clearly what's going on here, um, covering up for Bill all these years. And now all of a sudden we're supposed to believe that they um, have a major issue with uh, sex assault and they're, they're supporters of women, right? Um, and, and actually the left in America kind of does the same thing, by the way, with Israel, where they claim they stand for women's rights, gay rights, and yet the one and only country in the entire Middle East that actually um, has uh, women as equal citizens and Jews and Christians and Muslims and everyone of every sexuality, that's the country they're attacking. But here in Alabama, I've been um, here for over a month, actually, way before almost any other member of the national news media. In fact, I think I was the first um, from the national I, I was news about media. to say, cause I remember reading, I mean, you got there almost before the scandal even broke. Yeah, by the way, separately, I wasn't even here for this scandal. I came to just investigate Doug Jones and his radical left ties that I started to document, and then the scandal uh, broke out. So um, I've been looking into, as somebody who vetted Bill Clinton's sexual assault accusers, if indeed there was something to these accusers, if they were credible, then I would be one of their greatest champions. I would be their defenders. I, I, I stand with sexual assault accusers if they're credible. Um, but what I've been doing is just investigating the story instead of what the media has been doing, which is ignoring major bombshells about these women. And I'm finding that they're not credible. Um, well, I was about to say, I should have said this up front. I know I read reports of yours and others at Breitbart first that that 
uh, signature and stuff was fake. They said that you were all crazy. Now they have to admit it. How big is that? Uh, yeah, well, by the way, that's just a total an example of total uh, journalistic malpractice. So um, she gets up there. We're talking about Beverly uh, Nelson, uh, young Nelson. Um, she says that she was almost sexually assaulted. Roy Moore tried to sexually assault her in a car. She was 16 years old in 1977. And then her, she's up there with Gloria Allred, which are all, all the way already should tell you, you know, something about her credibility. Um, she shows a photocopy of a yearbook, not the original, but a photocopy of an inscription that she says that Roy Moore wrote. And then she read the whole thing. She said outright, he wrote it. Um, she didn't tell us, first of all, and the media failed after this came out to even report that in 1999, uh, Roy Moore signed her divorce document, and, and actually stamped a divorce document. And then what happens is you would stamp it, uh, a, a clerk would stamp it. After the signature, the clerk would then write her initials. And the initials of Roy Moore's clerk in, 19, in the 1990s was D.A., Dilbert Adams. Well, first, uh, why didn't uh, Young Nelson tell us that Roy Moore signed her divorce document? Pretty big. But second, go back to the yearbook. You see, he's signing his name, allegedly, and then right after the name are the initials D.A. So she claimed to us, well, he signed the initials D.A. because he was the district attorney. Uh, he wasn't. He was the assistant D.A. And by the way, and you also, said all this, and, 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 and you guys reported on it exclusively, basically. You got attacked everywhere. You can see it's fake. You can see it's different cobbled together. It's a lifted signature put on there, and now she has to admit she wrote it. <laughs> I mean, you can't listen to anything that comes out of her mouth now. Yeah, she, she says she wrote it. And, and by the way, just um, why would the initials clerks, uh, uh, clerks' initials from due to two decades later be on her? Sure, so it's not just her lying and signing his name that's fraud then, but if you actually lift government documents, and then, then it's a forgery under law. Well, so we don't know what she wrote and what she didn't because she's just saying, well, she made notes after. Um, sure, exactly. After what I'm saying is if what, she what lifted a mean? government document, I don't know about Alabama right. law, but I know Texas law. If you get a public document and you use that to then forge something about somebody else for business or whatever, then it's fraud. It's, it's bigger than just writing some BS in a book and saying, look, they did it. If you get somebody's documents and do it and use it against them, it, it really ups it. Listen, this is huge. I mean, first of all, there goes her credibility. Second, um, I interviewed her uh, son, actually, her stepson, who says she's a liar. I interviewed her boyfriend at the time, who, by the way, is now a minister who ministers also to sexual assault accusers. He says she's a liar. But she's just one. There, there's another one, 26-year-old, her name's Tina Johnson. Uh, she claims, Tina, that when she was 26, in the 1990s, uh, Roy Moore groped her. <laughs> well, you know, I looked into Tina Johnson, and the media didn't tell us, first of all, that she was in Roy Moore's office that day because she was being represented. Uh, sorry, her mother was being represented by Roy Moore, and the mother took Tina Johnson's child away from her. And it was a very nasty custody battle, one in which um, Roy Moore signed papers um, and filed papers calling Tina Johnson um, psychiatrically unstable uh, and, and saying wow. that she's physically I didn't even more. know this, and I've been reading a lot of your reports. Yeah. Wow, so they had a direct beef with him for what he did as the DA to get back at him. Wow. He was at the time a, a, a private lawyer, and he represented her mother. Wow. And she was in there that day to have her child taken away from her by Roy Moore's client. So huge. Why didn't the media tell us that? Sure, sure. I'm just thinking about as a lawyer and a DA and a judge, how many enemies this guy's got to have. Like, I'm a public figure. And, the, and imagine if this was happening to me, people would just line up around the block to make it up. I know you got to go, but we're back in 70 seconds. Let's do five more minutes with Aaron Klein because, man, I mean, I knew there was a lot of scams and... A lot of weird stuff going on. I know it was this crazy. Wow. Judge Roy Moore, is he going to win? Someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. This young generation who scream words like fascist have actually themselves become the fascist. You guys are the fascists. You're all the fascists. You're Get a white male! I just wish that somebody would create, like, some kind of a safe space where we can all just go and f***ing hate! You're a f***ing white man who gets to do whatever he wants to in this.
this space, right? You need to get out. I actually don't. All right. Hey, who wants to help me get this corner out of here? I need to bustle over here. <laughs> Donald J. Trump is now President of the United States. So the question is, are social justice warriors mentally ill, or are they just stupid? When your emotions control your actions, it affects not only yourself, but the people around you. There are over 7 million mentally ill and emotionally disturbed children in America. It has to be a joke. I stop, please. It's happening. I'm literally about to kill myself, and I'm not kidding. You better fix this right now. Get the f*** out of here. Jeff's losing control of himself. Get your phone away. Why? Quit recording. What? The matter he gets, the worse it becomes. Get the f*** away. You couldn't help interrupting, could you? You added nothing to that conversation. These are some of Tommy's drawings that the school sent over. There's an awful lot of hate in them. I am a nasty woman. Infused with your own genes, but yeah, I'm a nasty woman. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bing, bing. I want to apologize to listeners. I lied to you when I told you Trump would win the election, and he did. I lied to you when I told you that. that they're admitting that fluoride's causing brain damage, and it turned out I was right. I lied to you about a global government existing that was trying to take control of our country, which they now admit is true. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? I guess, actually, I didn't lie to you. And I'm on air every day fighting the globalists as they try to shut down free speech in America, as they try to derail our recovery, as they try to fold us into their world government, open up our borders, hand us over to the Islamic Caliphate. But I'll tell you this. When I'm on air, I wear a sports jacket and a nice shirt because I respect the fact that you're tuning in and watching and listening to what I have to say. That we're involved in very, very important activities. And that's why I want to reach out to you right now and explain something that's so critical. And that if you grasp it, we'll be able to literally turn the tide even faster against the globalists. And it's just this. I'm not always wearing this, ladies and gentlemen. I dress like this to politically get messages out to folks that aren't awake, to spur debates, but to also meet like-minded people who are out there feeling like they're alone and don't know how many of us there are. It's like Martin Luther King said, it's all of us of one human race who all have incredible skills and gifts that God gave us that we bring together in the human family to do incredible things. A few months ago, I saw media demonizing folks that put up signs at universities that said, all lives matter. Then they demonized people that said, it's okay to be white. These are universities where they're saying it's inherently evil and an abomination and satanic to be white. Right outside Austin, Texas, Texas State University says that. Most major universities are directing this to create racial division in this country and it's sickening. That's why I have designed with our crew several new limited edition t-shirts that expose this evil and fight true institutional leftist-based racial division and classical race war designs. Yeah, if you're just talking about how you're white or how you're black, it's okay. That's fine to be proud of yourself. But isn't it really great to realize we all got red blood? That's why the shirt is in red. Out here in space together, the dark blue of the night sky, but all of our red blood together ties us together, and that's what makes us great. The globalists are creating a fake debate to turn us against each other. Let's come together and say all lives matter. The fact is, it's not just okay, it's great to be human. Let me show you a few of the other designs we've got. They're available at InfoWarsStore.com. They help spread the word, and they help support the broadcast. A total win-win. This shirt is white. Whoa, and you've got major universities, major publications like BuzzFeed saying is milk racist because it's white. 
So yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's a white shirt that says it's okay to be white, okay to be black, okay to be brown, but it's great to be human. Now here's a really racist shirt that Martin Luther King would agree with, but that the modern leftists would absolutely hate. It says all lives matter and it exposes the institutional racism the left and Soros are bringing in to literally take minorities and turn them into the equivalent of brown Ku Klux Klan. This shirt is amazing, it's iconic, and it's limited edition. They're all available at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. And despite the fact that all these shirts are super high quality and are destined to be bestsellers, through Christmas, we're offering 25% off at InfoWarsStore.com on these limited edition shirts.